Hello everyone! In this episode we have a Shure ULX series uh, wireless system for repair. This is a ULX P4 receiver and nothing is wrong with it. And here we have a ULX1 belt pack transmitter which seems to be faulty. Here I have another working transmitter. Let's try with this one first. And watch this RF power indicator here and the battery indicator on the screen. Let's turn this on. And there you go. This uh, battery status of the transmitter appears on the screen of the receiver here, which is very handy. And uh, here we have full RF power and this green LED. There are two of them indicating which channel is currently used, A or B. All modern receivers have uh, two identical receiving channels with two separate antennas to eliminate blind spots because the signal from a transmitter can uh, arrive not only directly but also reflected from the walls and furniture and such and potentially reach the antennas out of phase and cancel each other out. Uh, so uh, the receiver uh, monitors constantly uh, which channel is receiving the best and switching to that channel. And uh, this approach reduces chances of such blind spots drastically. All modern equipment, I believe, is done like this. Only 20 to 30 years old receivers could have one channel and one antenna. So now let's uh, turn this guy off. And turn this one on. So it's the same uh, group 1 channel 1, but the battery indicator does not appear and we have RF power but no channel is active. So something seems to be wrong with this transmitter. Let's have a look at the transmitted signal first using my spectrum analyzer. I am using this Shure antenna for this band which is G3. And I set the frequency here to this frequency, 470.275 MHz. So let's turn on this faulty transmitter. And there you go. We have our carrier, which is strong and uh, the frequency is correct, but there is no modulation. I believe we must see some modulation because uh, in order to get rid of the noise uh, when transmitter is not powered up the receiver mutes the audio until it detects a so-called tone key and when transmitter is on it must always transmit this tone key which is not audible uh, because it is way above the frequency range we can hear it is 32 kilohertz so we don't see it here and this must be the reason that uh, the receiver does not show which channel is active and uh, there is no battery indicator as well. Uh, so it must be transmitted as well somehow. I'm not entirely sure uh, how this is done exactly. So let's turn this guy off and try the working transmitter and there you go we have our carrier and modulation as well look at this i noticed when i played with this faulty transmitter that when i push on the case sometimes i can make it work and there you go uh, modulation appears as well as a channel indicator here and battery indicator as well. So I'm not sure if it's good or bad. 
It's good because uh, most probably we don't need to replace any parts, everything is okay except some mechanical problem, some uh, bad contact or cracked soldering joint or something like that, but it might be really tricky to find. So let's uh, have a look inside. Here I took the cover off the transmitter and uh, by the way I see this uh, popular uh, real-time clock crystal but there is no real-time clock in this transmitter of course there is no need so I believe it must be used for that tone key so the frequency must be 32.768 kilohertz so this is a two-board construction and it seems to me that the boards are held together only by a small board-to-board -board connector in this area. So let's try taking them apart. And there you go. I think I'm having some luck here and I see the problem, or at least I see a problem. Uh, it is a cracked soldering joint on one of the pins of this connector. And I'm not sure I can show it very well on camera, I don't have a macro lens. But I will certainly try to make a close-up picture with my phone or something like that. Now let's see if I can show the soldering. This thing is tiny. First I apply some flux here. And let's touch up this soldering joint. Okay. I think it worked. I reflowed all the pins of this connector on both sides just in case. It seems like the fix worked and now we have a working transmitter. The transmitter is back together and is working fine and I should say that I always admired sure quality and I really do but I don't quite like this particular design decision with this board to board interconnect. It's a tiny connector and there is nothing else holding the boards together so it seems to me it's taken a lot of mechanical stress when people drop these transmitters on the floor and stuff like that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a weak point of this model. If you like this video, give it thumbs up. Thank you very much. Bye.